The most common question I am asked about the Enneagram is some version of this. I know it's a super tantalizing question. In the world of relationships and dating, any amount of information that can better our success rate is desirable. Dating is hard. Relationships are hard. We will take any kind of hack or technique or strategy that we can get. I've heard so many different versions of questions like, can Enneagram 8s have a healthy marriage with a type 4? Or I'm a 5 struggling with my uh, relationship with a type 2. What do we do? Should we break up? Is this a bad combination? Which types am I the most compatible with? Like, should I put it on my Hinge profile? I will only date type 9s and type 1s. Or what type should I avoid like the plague? Should I just immediately discount people because they say they're a type 3 or a type 4 or a type 5? I get questions like this all the time. And for all of these inquiries, I have the exact same answer. And that is any Enneagram type can make it work with any Enneagram type. All that matters is levels of health. So think of it this way. What if hypothetically I say that type nines and type ones are the ideal romantic partnership, okay? Let's, in this hypothetical world, we're saying nines and ones, that is who you should be paired with. What if they're both in their stress paths? What if the Enneagram type one is repressing their anger because they feel like anger is bad, and so they are just feeling the simmering frustration that they are not achieving perfection in all things, that their partner isn't fulfilling their expectations, and they are just constantly dissatisfied with what's going on around them. What if the Enneagram nine is also in their stress path, and they're just going along to get along in order not to disrupt the peace with the Enneagram type one? What if they are just fully covering all their desires, all their needs, everything that they have to say in order to try to appease their partner. As you can imagine, this would create a perfect storm of relationship issues that would make any couple's therapist's ears and wallets perk up. And I know this is kind of a frustrating answer because I get it, relationships are hard. Like we want someone to give us like a guide of like, this is who you should be dating and this is exactly how you make a healthy relationship work. But the strategy that I can offer you is instead of focusing on who you should or you should not date, instead focus on being your healthiest self. That way when you finally meet that person who fills your stomach with butterflies, you're like, I could talk to you for a million years and never get tired of it. When you meet that person, you are in the best position to do the work that a relationship requires. Learning about yourself and learning about other types improves communication and it kind of extends and grows this compassion for the other person, which is necessary regardless of what the other person's Enneagram number is. And I just wanna offer a little hope to anyone who is in a relationship and feels frustrated by the way that your Enneagram types interact. I have seen so many healthy marriages and relationships regardless of the type pairing. I have seen two very healthy Enneagram 8s um, as a, a husband and wife. They adopted two kids. They're just like a freaking powerhouse of a couple. I'm an Enneagram 3 married to a type 4. We have very different ways of dealing with conflict. We have very different ways of dealing with emotions and we, we're making it work. We are in love and we are committed to making it work uh, for, the, for the long haul. I have seen an extremely introverted type five husband doing the work to make sure that their type seven partner feels loved and appreciated and doesn't have that terrible FOMO. If you wanna watch my Enneagram dating tips, I will put those videos right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.